Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Laura Boyle. I am a senior assistant director in the Office of Admission at Holy Cross. Today, I am joined by three of our current Holy Cross students who are juniors. We have Carter, Molly, and Matt, accompanied by their parents. We are excited to speak with you all today about the role of parents and guardians within this process. Um, a few reminders before we get started, closed captioning is available. We will also have this available on the website after should you choose to, to view it at a later date. Um, and we do want to make sure that your questions are answered today. So please make sure to utilize that Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. So jumping right in, Carter, first question is to you. How did you decide where to start in this process? How did you figure out, you know, the balance, you know, figuring out what you wanted, what questions to even ask? How did you and your mom navigate that? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, hi everyone. My name is Carter Seitz and I am a junior here at the college from Toledo, Ohio, and I'm majoring in econ with a stats minor. But getting started in the process, I started looking at schools at the start of my junior year of high school. And um, being from Ohio, the first places I started to look were back home. I was looking for smaller institutions and it was kind of those initial um, schools that I started visiting that I started to kind of refine my search and figure out what I was like truly looking for in a school. And um, that's when I started looking out East Coast, kind of a Holy Cross came into uh, my eyes as well. But really trying to find a place that um, I could walk around campus and see familiar faces, but also still able to meet new people all the time, really build a sense of community. And um, so that's kind of um, where I started and how I, um, what I was trying to find in a school um, and ultimately leading me to here at Holy Cross. Great. And Kelly, how did you support Carter through this process? Um, I pretty much gave him total control. He has to go to school there for four years. So um, I was there wherever he wanted to go on tours and encouraged him to follow exactly um, what his dream was based on what he wants to be later in life. So I encouraged him on anything he really wanted to do. He did have a time frame. He only had one school left to visit and it was Holy Cross. So you have to kind of put a stop at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Matt, what about yourself? Your, your process was slightly different. So how did you navigate what you were looking for? Where did you begin? Yeah, so hi everyone, I'm Matt Cedeno. Um, I'm actually a student athlete on campus, much like Carter. Um, I play uh, football. Um, so I was a part of the uh, recruiting process, which can be very strenuous at times, uh, especially when you haven't had um, anyone in your family go through the process before. So um, the biggest thing for me was trusting the process. So many people told me that um, throughout my search for uh, a school. And it was really hard to believe, um, you know, as you would go to different schools and you'd have, you know, some coaches be interested one week and then another week they're not interested. Um, so I really focused on what I was looking for in a school. And I tried to narrow it down based on where that interest was expressed as well. And the three things I was looking for were great academics, great athletics, and a great alumni network. And I felt like Holy Cross um, really had all those things to offer. Um, and really, after um, visiting campus, I made a list of, you know, my top um, five to 10 options, the things that were close to my home in South Florida, um, and then maybe things that were a little bit further. Massachusetts is a little bit far. Um, so we tried to hit schools that were close to uh, each other on one trip. And um, Holy Cross, just visiting Holy Cross campus and seeing how beautiful it was, seeing that it checked all the boxes. And then on top of that meeting, everyone on campus I met was just so warm and welcoming. It was, it was pretty much a no brainer at the end of the day. And once we, uh, got home and, um, you know, saw what schools we had looked at. And Barbara and Lester, how did you navigate those conversations with Matt? How were you able to support him? Oh, you're muted. Thank you. Matt did most of the footwork, much like Carter. Um, we had 
um, in our school, in the high school, um, we had a program called Navions where you could kind of uh, input, I'm sure all schools have something similar, um, where you could input like the size that you'd like, um, you know, so on and so forth, whether you want faith-based, you don't want faith-based, so on and so on. So we kind of just would rein him in um, when it seemed like we were kind of all over the place and he would bring his iPad and his dongle, is it, right, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> and he would hook us up to the TV and we would have Saturday afternoons where he'd show us some videos. Um, so we were kind of virtual before virtual was cool, I guess. Um, he would have, he would uh, virtual tie it, ties us there by um, showing us what he had been looking for and looking at. And we would just kind of rein him in and just say, you know, what are the graduation rates there? And, um, you know, what are, you know, some of the commentary, things like that. So we just kind of asked him to just dig a little bit deeper. Um, we would pull videos up of move-in day and see what the um, atmosphere was like, you know, how did it seem um, that they were welcoming students, you know, what the process was. And so um, we did that. We And we took some road trips, but ultimately um, it kind of came back to that feel um, virtually when you had that ability to um, kind of look at them all together on a Saturday afternoon and say that did have the faith base, that did have... Um, the 90 plus percentile graduation rate. It did have this, it did have that. And then of course, you know, as Matt said, um, having that alumni and having um, the excellence in academics along with, um, along with that. So we were fortunate enough that we happened to be in the area for a wedding and able to bop in because uh, you're not able to bop into every school necessarily. And I think for all of us, much like it was for Carter, that was the last school that we had on the list and um, glad that we got to fit it in because we all felt comfortable. So I think for us, it was a matter of knowing when we both um, were comfortable. And then of course, we wanted a city that um, he may call home one day, someone said to us that be careful because you don't want to just say you're going somewhere for four years. It might be for 40. It may be where they meet someone. It may be where they wind up residing. It may be where they get their, their first job. And so we wanted to look for that as well. So with it being so close to Boston, it was kind of a win on all, on all fronts. Yeah. And he found someone that might keep him in Boston. So <laughs> <laughs> Molly, your, your process was slightly different as well in that your sister was already a student at Holy Cross. So you had exposure to the school itself. Um, now, did that help you or did that hinder you? <laughs> Initially, as you were looking at colleges, you know, you had Holy Cross in, in the back of your mind is where your sister was attending, but how did you decide what was right for you through this process? Yeah, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is Molly Grant. Uh, I'm a third year as well. I'm from Potomac, Maryland, right by DC. And I'm a political science major and religious studies minor. Um, and as just mentioned, I have an older sister who is uh, currently at her last year here at Holy Cross. And so I think when I was initially beginning my college, college search, it almost hindered me in a way because I wanted it to be my own search. So I didn't really want to think about where my sister was or what she was doing in the beginning. However, I think when I first really started looking at schools, I wanted to ignore any external factors that were there. So where my sister went or where my friends were talking about going. And I wanted to just sit down and think what would be the right feel for me. And I think one of the biggest things was the size of the school. I just knew I wanted to be in a smaller um, liberal arts school versus a bigger school, just a personal preference. And I think once I figured that out, just looking at Holy Cross and seeing what they have to offer. And obviously before COVID going to visit my sister, um, it kind of just felt right, the size, the academics and the alumni network. And so I think just taking the time to sit down and see where you see yourself, uh, kind of disregarding any you know family members or anything like that is really important, but also taking advantage of you know me having a sister here coming to visit, uh, talking to her about how her freshman year was because we're only a year apart was uh, definitely helpful towards the end of the process. And Maureen, how did you help Molly navigate this having already been through it in the year prior? Yeah, I think Molly benefited a little bit from having had that experience because it is tough trying to, to find your way through the whole process. Um, but it, it was Molly's own search. So we had to be very cautious of that and you know recognize what was a good fit for Molly versus what was a good fit for her sister. Um, 
and she made she made her lists. She made her checks and, and balances and pros and cons. Um, but in the end, you know, Molly just knew she felt right. It was a good fit, and she kind of knew it was a good fit, and uh, couldn't be happier. And Molly, you mentioned that you were able to determine that you wanted a smaller institution. We have a question here. How did you decide whether you wanted a big school or a small school? What factors played into that decision? Yes, so I think I knew pretty quickly into my college search that I wanted a smaller institution. Um, I went to a pretty small high school. It's about 60 kids in my graduating class. And so anything to me seemed a little bit bigger. Um, although when I did go see um, a big state school or um, a bigger school just kind of near where I was, I didn't really feel like I fit in very well. I kind of wanted a close relationship with professors. Um, I've always liked to participate and get to know people. And I feel like I had a better chance of doing that at a smaller school. So one thing that I really thought to myself is, do I want to be in an auditorium with 500 other kids in a class, which some people that fits them very well, or do I wanna be in a classroom with 20 other kids where I get to know my professor and know my peers in that class? And I think it just felt right knowing that I would have a smaller class, a more close relationship to professors. And I think that's just kind of what made it the deciding factor. But I think what was really important is seeing both bigger, medium and small schools and seeing which one are nowadays virtually going online and accessing that information and seeing which one you personally think you would uh, do best in and fit best in. Great, thank you. We're, we're talking a lot about feel here, right? And a lot of that feel is based on visiting the college campus and actually being able to step foot on the campus and experience a tour and see what the campus center is like. Carter, how do you, <laughs> how do you suggest you know, trying to, in a virtual world, get that similar feel. What are some, some tips and tricks do you think that, that might help a student through this virtual process? Yeah, so I think if you were to talk to any Holy Cross student, um, you'll kind of hear this um, kind of a similar story where it's once you step on campus, you kind of realize that um, it's a beautiful place. The People are incredibly friendly. Uh, it's the interactions you have on campus. And while students aren't able to really be visiting right now, I think that just talking with current students is um, probably the best way to get a true understanding of what it's like um, as a student here. And um, Holy Cross students will be honest about like any questions you ask too. And um, I know for at least all of our tour guides, our emails and bios are listed on the Holy Cross uh, website. And so I personally think just the best way to get an understanding of the college without actually being there is speaking to students directly, sending uh, questions over email or even asking for a time to chat over Zoom now that we're all so familiar with this uh, digital format. And Barbara, you mentioned that you all spent your Saturday afternoons <laughs> exploring schools virtually before virtual was cool. Um, so how were some of the ways that you as parents helped map decipher with that virtual aspect, but also how you as a parent figured out, you know, if you were going to be comfortable with that school through that virtual capacity. So we had a little bit of um, a little bit of fun between his sophomore and junior year when we were traveling, we kind of, um, we kind of passed through some campuses, not necessarily what you would um, consider a tour by any means, but just kind of looking at um, the area and the size of the school and just what that felt like for Matt. So initially, um, he knew he wanted a campus feel. Um, we had visited like Yale and um, where, you know, the science building is on one block and um, the English building was on another block. Um, you know, poli sci is two miles down, whatever the case may be. So he knew he didn't want what he didn't want. So it was a little bit helpful, but we weren't quite sure when he said small what that meant. So we just kind of drove through, honestly, some of the area, um, some of those area schools in some of our trips and realized he didn't really want small, small. So what he was talking about was not, you know, 2000 or 1000. So we kind of got to then that feel. And then he knew, um, like you said, it was a little bit different because he was being recruited. So then he um, kind of honed in on wanting to be kind of part of like a baby Ivy or part of that Patriot League, kind of that type of school that still held academics as uh, the priority um, with his athletics uh, being secondary. 
So that kind of um, narrowed it for us. And then he did the rest of the work. He's our uh, tech guy. So then he would, um, <laughs> he would on a Saturday afternoon, we had a lot of fun with it. He would pull it up and put it on the big screen for us. And, um, you know, some of these schools um, had used drone footage and some had not, but they all have now some amazing footage to just get a feel for, you know, if it's modern, is it, um, you know, is it, you know, like you have, you know, the classic um, building structure, things like that. And then you got to dig a little bit deeper. Do you want faith base? Is that Jesuit where, what speaks to the families, you know, the graduation rates, you have to look at um, numbers sometimes. Sometimes you have to get away from that feel and you do have to look is at, um, you know, a lot what Carter said, what are the students saying? What is it like on move-in day? Where's the energy? Um, and so Matt would bring all of that to us virtually in the living room. And uh, we pretty much narrowed it down that way, to be honest with you, we're in South Florida, so we're not close to much. So unlike you in the Northeast, where you can within three or four hours visit probably 14 schools, we're not so blessed. So <laughs> we drive uh, nine hours just to see school at the, in Tallahassee, Florida in our same state. So um, we had to be a little bit more creative with the virtual means. Thank you. Matt, <laughs> as we mentioned that your process was a little bit different, but your mom just mentioned that you wanted initially a small institution, but how small is too small? So are there things looking back on it now that you're a junior in college? Are there things that you wish you had known through this process or, you know, different things that you focused on that don't necessarily seem as relevant now that you are a junior in college? So I think a big key to the, the size, the size of the school, a lot of people focus on that. Um, I think looking back and something I should have focused on was the size of the classroom. And Molly touched on this, but I think that's where you really see the size aspect of a school. I really wanted, um, I didn't realize how important it was to me, but I did want to be able to have that intimate learning environment where you know the professor, um, they know your name. And that was a, a big um, point uh, which admissions gave me and the coaches gave me um, and I enjoyed but at this point I've come to love um, as it's been so beneficial in my own uh, intellectual journey um, and you don't realize that uh, some of like some of my friends that the, they don't even know their professor's name which probably isn't applicable to all students but um, you know at Holy Cross just and being so far from home having professors who take a vested interest uh, not only in, you know, the work that you're doing in class, but in your life, just having, you know, professors get to know me on a professor, uh, a personal level and me get to know them um, has spoken volumes, not only to my academic growth, but my personal growth as well. Um, and I think it's just so beneficial to, to have that intimate learning environment. I think it's probably one of the, the best things that Holy Cross has to offer, what makes them so great. Uh, and I'll I'll say it till the end of my days that the people are what make Holy Cross great. I mean, it's a beautiful campus, but um, it's really the people that um, that have brought me there and and kept me there and left me with really no regrets in my college search. But um, definitely focusing on what's in, most important to you and your college experience, and to me, that was having uh, you know a growing um, the ability to grow intellectually uh, and personally. Molly, what about you? Is there anything that you wish you had maybe done differently or other factors that you considered at the time that weren't as important in the long run? Um, yeah, there are definitely some factors I think that I think this just being like in high school and talking to your friends about college that you may think are um, pretty important in the time being that aren't important in the long run. Um, I know one thing that is very important that I think everyone should keep in mind is location. Um, obviously the three students here, no one's from New England. Um, so we're all kind of a little bit far away. So I think um, I didn't necessarily consider location as much, um, mostly because my sister had already went here, but I do think it's important to consider, um, you know, where you wanna be in school. However, going off that, um, one thing that I think I did consider back in high school that is not as relevant now that I am a student is focusing too much on the details of second guessing yourself of, am I sure this is really it? Um, I was very indecisive. I still am very indecisive when I was choosing a college. So I think 
back in high school, I would focus a little bit too much on, well, what if the alumni network at one school is better than the other, even though they're both very strong? Or what if I want a small school, but this isn't the right size? I think focusing on just, you kind of know in a sense what is right and wrong for you. And um, you can do this online with Holy Cross. You can look at all their stats. You can reach out to students. And I think you eventually will get to know um, if it is a good school for you or if it's not the school for you. And I think focusing in on all the details a little bit too much can sometimes hinder your ability to think clearly about the decision. I mean, just to piggyback on what Molly said um, in terms of location, um, in, our, in our search, we went to several cities and several different schools and come to find out um, one of them in particular, the airport was literally a hundred miles from the school. So as a parent, when it's time for him to come home, you know, what happened, how is he getting to the airport? And then if there's a delay or something happens, how do you get your child from an airport that's hundred miles away? Worcester happens to have a regional airport that's literally a $15 Uber ride to the campus. So that definitely gave some comfort. Even if he has to fly into Boston, it's only 45 minutes, they have trains and, a, and an Uber is still, you know, affordable. A hundred miles, it, it, it really is something that you don't consider. And there's a lot of big schools that when you, you get hyped up into whatever the name of the school is, but then you realize, wow, that's quite a hike to get there. So um, that just triggered what Molly said, that, that it is that for those that are considering Holy Cross, you've got you know, Worcester Regional right there. You've got, you know, we've even flown into um, Connecticut, um, Springfield, and that's 40 minutes up the street. So you're really centrally located between the three major airports. Bradford, I think. I think it's Bradley, Bradford, in, Bradley. Bradley in, uh Hartford. Yeah, Hartford. So just the little things that, as you're saying, you didn't consider. But, uh, Absolutely. You want to make sure that <laughs> you can get your student there and back more easily. Kelly, I have a question for you now. You mentioned that you let Carter take full ownership of this process. So in doing that, how did you as, as a family find the balance so that this process didn't become all consuming? Um, at the time, I was lucky enough where I wasn't working um, outside the home. So I was able to travel with him to go visit like the surrounding schools in Ohio. And then we did a spring break that we went out east and did what, three or four just for spring break and drove. But like they were saying about traveling, I pretty much told him I didn't want him to go to a school that was only four or five hours away because I was not gonna take him and pick him up because my youngest is 11 years younger than Carter. So like I have a whole slew of little kids they have to take to school and do all that so I'm probably not the greatest parent I'm like go far away so you can get on a plane but it was a huge thing for me for him to be able to safely get on a plane and fly to school and also um, it's been great since he's on the cross country and track team those parents of his teammates actually have him for holidays and that kind of stuff. So that's been really nice too, since he is so far away. I know that wasn't the topic, but that's a big part to know that that school has a ton of local kids where that is an option for them to be able to do. Absolutely, you have to have that reassurance. We've mentioned a few times the alumni network and we have a question here, how beneficial is the alumni network to a student? And is this an important factor to be looking at through the college process? Um, Molly and Matt, I know you both specifically have mentioned this. So maybe Molly, if you wanna jump in. Yeah, so I uh, personally think the alumni network is a pretty big factor. Um, at least it was for me when I was applying and I think it's paid off definitely now. Um, I think having a resource available to you with Holy Cross alumni is uh, wonderful. Holy Cross alumni are very passionate about Holy Cross students and they are always happy to reach out and help you find a job, an internship. Um, I was doing the DC program this past semester and we met virtually with a handful of Holy Cross alumni and after every single meeting, 
they were like, please reach out to me on LinkedIn, shoot me an email. If you ever need help finding an internship, you don't know what you want to do. You need help finding work in DC, or uh, that's just because uh, that's where we were located. Like, please reach out. And they would even reach out to us and being like, how's it going? Does anyone need any help for after graduation? So it definitely has paid off in the long run. And I also just think that Holy Cross alumni know um, how Holy Cross students, how hard we work and how hard we appreciate uh, the work we do. And so I think having a strong alumni network definitely was a considerable factor. And I think it hopefully will pay off. And Matt, what about you? Your family has mentioned, you know, it's not four years, it's 40 years. So how did that factor in for you? I think Molly hit on everything um, on the technical side of the alumni network. So let me add a personal anecdote. Today, I found out that I, um, thank the Lord, that I uh, will be employed this summer um, with a private equity firm. Um, how I came into that opportunity um, was I had reached out to a ton of alumni and they led me in a lot of um, great directions. Unfortunately, um, I was kind of late to the process in terms of applying for um, internships and I didn't have any, um, any offers. Um, I actually did a Instagram takeover um, a couple of months ago. I think it was shortly before the holidays. And then an alumni um, saw that I introduced myself when I was in South Florida. He happened to live about 20 minutes away from me. Uh, he, he emailed me on uh, LinkedIn and asked if we could meet for coffee. Um, we met for coffee. Um, he was like, you know, you sound like a good kid and send me your resume, all these things. Great networking. Um, he emails me uh, about a week later and says, hey, I talked to my boss. We'd love to interview you. I went in for the first round interview. Um, I guess I did well enough that they asked me for the second round interview. Um, yesterday, I interviewed with the head of the credit fund for the uh, firm. Um, I didn't even think that the interview went that well. I was super nervous and I didn't want to let down um, this mentor that, you know, I had from Holy Cross. Um, and I got a call less than 12 hours later that I got the offer for the job. So I think that speaks a lot to um, the Holy Cross network. There's so many more stories like that. And I'm so happy that I have to add mine to that network now. Um, and, you know, I could give you guys a ton of stories from, you know, friends and, and some of my teammates that it's just crazy how things work out. But um, literally seeing it manifest for myself and, you know, hearing guys in later stages of life that want career changes, being able to call up, um, you know, someone that they went to Holy Cross or looking up a company that they want to work out and seeing that a Holy Cross alumni works there is, is just, it's just so awesome. It's just to know that you have like this familial network that's global um, is super reassuring and, um, you know, just makes you really happy to wear the purple and white. Thank you. As we're looking at the time here, I, I want to ask one final question to all of you. And that is, you know, we've we've talked about where you're beginning within this process. How did you make that final decision as a student? How did you decide on Holy Cross? And parents, how did you know that your student was was making the right decision? So Matt, why don't you go first? Um, so yeah, um, I'm just so excited. I'm sorry. I'm still, uh, <laughs> I'm still reeling from just the opportunity and, you know, just the places that Holy Cross has put me in. Um, but not having the knowledge that I have now, I think the, the final decision for me was, and I mentioned this earlier, I really think it was the people. Um, it was one of the most personal uh, relationships that I had created um, in my college church. I had taken officials to uh, a few other schools after I had narrowed it down uh, later in the process. And, you know, Holy Cross checked all those boxes. Several other schools checked those boxes too. Um, meeting with, being able to meet with people on campus, and I realized that we're virtual now, but um, like being able to, to talk with students, I think was the biggest factor for me, um, as well as, you know, the the coaches um just just knowing that um fr different from other schools that i had visited 
Um, knowing that they took a vested interest in your academic success and your life after college was, um, again, like I said, just extremely gratifying and reassuring. And just to know that I would have people who cared about me when I was 1300 miles away from home, um, regardless of whether or not, you know, I had, I could play if I was good, um, you know, to know that they were still going to, to care about me, and, um, you know, still take a vested interest in who I was as a person was really what uh, tipped the balance. And that's from, you know, the athletics office all the way to the admissions office, um, you know, which I'm a part of now and to the, to the um, wonderful people in Kimball Dining Hall all across campus, um, to Molly and Carter, people I've, you know, just met along the way, just to, just to have this, even if you see someone in passing, just to have this great bond um, with everyone that you meet is, is really what uh, was the deciding factor for HC. As a dad, I, um, we have our draft board, as we call it. I had the big mirror in the living room and took a dry erase marker and put all the candidates. And every week we would just have checks or cross one off the list. And um, after narrowing it down between his top five, and there's this little app I had, it's called, you know, College Combat. And it has different um, criteria and Holy Cross consistently came in like his top five. Against everybody you put in, Holy Cross was definitely there. Um, so, and anyone I spoke to when you mentioned, hey, Holy Cross, Holy Cross? Oh, wow. You know, because the, those in the know know how the, the, the stringent standards are, and it's a great reputation. But what actually sealed the deal for me was going out and visiting. We had an unofficial visit on Father's Day. Father's Day happened to meet with the football coach. He said, I, I guess he couldn't get back home or what have you. He was on campus and was willing to meet us that morning because we had to drive back to Hartford to fly out. So we drove over to Holy Cross. He met with us, gave us a tour and told us all these great things about the school. And I also asked him, well, you know, what happens? It's a big commitment. What if Matt gets hurt? And he said, when you come to Holy Cross, you're here because we, you're, you're, you're the student first, academics first. Your academics first. And that's how much we care. If he was to blow out his knee or what have you, he's here for the duration of his education. You're not gonna get a phone call and say, hey, your kid blew out his knee, so he'll be on the next bus home and his scholarship is gone, you know? So, or, and just the fact that study hall, they have to, as athletes, have mandatory study hall. Um, so it's not like they're gonna let any of the athletes slip through the cracks. So that having an older son that has gone to college and played ball, seeing the differences and the fact that they care not only of his athletic ability, but the fact of how he's gonna do as a, a, a student really kind of sealed the deal for us. Mo? Thank you. Carter and Kelly, what about you? Yeah, so uh, similar to Matt, I would say that like my experiences and opportunities at Holy Cross now, like I have such a greater appreciation for the school than uh, when I like finalized my decision to come to Holy Cross. But looking back uh, kind of into my senior year and choosing a school, um, one of the top things I was concerned about was just uh, the financials of it all. What was uh, Holy Cross gonna be financially affordable? And luckily with our school, um, we meet 100% of need-based aid, which is really important to me. And um, looking outside of financial aid, just going back to my visit, my time on campus, um, during my senior, uh, senior year of high school, I interviewed at multiple different schools. But during my interview at Holy Cross, it was the only school that brought in my mom uh, at the end of the interview to like ask if they had any questions. And it was really just like an added plus to the school that they, it kind of showed me in addition to just the conversations we had in the interview and my time on campus, but just how much of a community Holy Cross was trying to build. And it is like a second family to you um, outside of your immediate family. So um, I would say, yeah, those uh, 
experiences on campus were um, really important to me. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, please reach out to current students to kind of have those conversations as well. So like I said before, I let Carter pretty much decide on where he was gonna go to school, but I can read Carter pretty well. Um, and so every school that we visited, you could tell just as soon as we drove on campus, like that's not gonna be the school. So Holy Cross we visited was the last school and it was the worst storm, rain. It was awful. We got stuck in Worcester because of the hurricanes. Um, after that visit, he loved it even after the worst, like no sleep. We had to drive back to Ohio, but the coach for the cross country team, Coach K, um, pretty much sealed the deal. I think for me, he went out of his way trying to find us flights from like Rhode Island, like just to try to get us home. And normally coaches after the visit, like they wouldn't do that, especially with division one school. So that to me sealed the deal. Um, Coach K is pretty cool. So it's, I think, a lot to do with the coaches. And then the tour and meeting different people there was actually we met, was that the day we met someone from our area too? I think that was the day. So it was really funny from someone from Ohio. So we had a lot to talk about. So that was cool. And Molly, what about you? Will you also just mention how you heard about the strength of the alumni network? Yes. Um, so I think what initially made me choose Holy Cross is actually, I'm a, obviously, as I said, I'm a very indecisive person. So I actually recommend this with COVID restrictions. I made a list of the pros and cons of Holy Cross and my other top choice um, back in my senior year of high school. And I had like 30 things I rated on like a point scale because I was so indecisive of where I wanted to go. Um, I think deep down, I knew I wanted to go to Holy Cross, but I kind of just wanted to affirm that decision um, with it. And I think, you know, having a sister that went there, I was able to just text her and be like, this is this is the right choice, right? Like, I, I'm, I'm not going crazy. Like, I know I belong here. And I think that kind of just made it very final for me. And um, I think just going into the future and touching upon the alumni network again, um, obviously I have some other family that went here too. So just knowing kind of the community of it all and how resourceful that will be in a few years, even now, honestly, um, just confirms that I made the right decision. Maureen, what were your thoughts? <laughs> Aside from the fact that it'll be easier to get them both home. <laughs> Right, exactly. And parents weekends a breeze. Um, you know, it, it, I'll go along with the common theme here and that's community. I, you look at this and when Molly had her interview, she had an interview on campus and we were fortunate enough at that time to be able to do that. Um, but they had students in the admissions office walking around talking to the parents waiting while their students were interviewing. And it, uh, I still remember there was a, I don't remember his name, but there was a student there and he talked about his experiences. And I think that that's the best way. And again, a common theme, that's the best way to get to know Holy Cross, find students, talk to them, see what their experiences are. And um, it, it makes a big difference. I mean, the community from the students to the alumni, to the parents has been nothing short of remarkable. And uh, I think, this, you know, if, if you can find ways online to talk to students, to connect that way, I think that would be very beneficial. Also look up move in day freshman year because that's always a good a good thing too. I agree. I agree. Wonderful. Well thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, we really appreciate you taking the time to to chat with all of us and share your experiences. We we do have another panel tomorrow which is five ways high school junior high school juniors can strengthen your application. We also have a virtual tour tomorrow led by some current Holy Cross students at 11 a.m. Um, followed by an admission information session. So if you have more questions about Holy Cross in particular, I definitely recommend checking out the, the tour tomorrow. All of these panels from this week will be available later on for our website. You can view at any point in time. And as always, please do not hesitate to reach out to any of us, particularly within the admission office. If you have any questions, we are more than happy to help you navigate this process. Um, we hope that you're well and healthy during this challenging time. And thank you again. Have a wonderful day.